Hello, and welcome back to my Q&A video series about the Pandas library in Python. And the question for today is, why do some Pandas commands end with parentheses and other commands don't? That is a great question. Uh, we need, as always, an example data set to work with. So let's import pandas as pd. And then we're going to use a data set uh, scraped from the IMDB website, the Internet Movie Database. And it's just some of their top rated movies. So we'll say movies equals pd.read csv, because it's a comma separated value file. And we'll read directly from a URL, and it's bit.ly slash IMDB ratings. And if you run that, you will download the data into a data frame named movies. So let's look at some example commands and uh, compare and contrast. Okay. So first, we're going to use movies.head, which um, uh, which is how we look at the first five rows of the data frame. And you can see this is just um, some data about movies uh, that you might recognize. Uh, another command we're going to try out is movies.describe. And just like head, it ends with parentheses. And this one, uh, the way describe works is as long as there's at least one numeric column, it will show you descriptive statistics of all numeric columns, which in this case are star rating and duration. So it, these are just descriptive statistics on these two columns. Okay, mean, uh, median, count of non-null values, standard deviation, etc. Okay, so those both have parentheses after them, as you noticed. Now let's try some that don't. So we've got movies.shape, and that's a tuple that tells us there are 979 rows and six columns. Or we can look at movies.dtypes, which tells us the data types of each of the six columns. Okay, So floating, floating point column and integer column and four object columns, which basically just mean strings. Okay. So we've got these ones with parentheses and these ones without. So what's the deal? Well, this just comes back to the fact that movies is a data frame. That is its object type. And as a data frame, it has certain methods and attributes simply because it's a data frame. The methods are like head and describe. They're the ones with parentheses. And the attributes are the ones without parentheses, like shape and dtype. And when thinking about methods and attributes, I, um, I like to think of methods as actions, action-oriented, and attributes as just like descriptions about who you are, okay? So uh, if I was a Python object, Kevin, uh, some some actions, which are methods, might be kevin.talk, with parentheses, or kevin.eat, parentheses. Some attributes might be kevin.age, no parentheses, because it's an attribute, or kevin.height. So that's an attribute. Okay. So um, this is kind of something you'll just have to get used to. Uh, in Python in general, but with pandas um, especially, because most things you're going to do will either be a data frame method or attribute, or a series method or attribute. Okay. So if you want to see all of these things you can do using methods or attributes, you just type movies, the name of the object, hit it, hit a period and then hit the tab character. And then you can scroll up and down with your keyboard and you'll see both methods and attributes. Now, unfortunately, this list doesn't actually tell us which ones of these are methods and which are attributes. You'll just kind of have to memorize that 
or try it out and see what happens, okay? So, uh, a couple more things. Um, methods, just like a, a pandas function, so pandas function is pd.readcsv. That's not a method of an object, that's just a pandas function, okay? Because it starts with pd. But um, just like read CSV, a, uh, a data frame method will have potentially required and optional arguments. So movies.describe, it doesn't have any um, uh, required arguments. Um, as you can see, you didn't have to put anything in the parentheses. But there are some optional arguments. So for example, you can say include equals and you pass it a list of strings, and we're just gonna pass it the string object, and now it will only describe the columns with the type object, okay? So for those four columns, it tells us a count of non-null values. How many of those values are unique? So there's like 12 different content ratings, for example. What is the top? meaning most frequent value in that column. So the, um, uh, the plurality, I guess, um, the most common content rating is R. The most common title is the girl with the dragon tattoo. Um, and the frequency of that top value. So out of these 976 movies with non-null values, uh, 460 have an R rating. Anyway, that was just a long description of dot .describe. The point there was that the describe method, just like pandas functions, have required and optional arguments, okay? So, uh, as always, I'm gonna end with a bonus tip. Your bonus tip is that any time, and this is for the IPython slash Jupyter Notebook only, um, any time you have a method or a function and you want to remember what the arguments are, you just click anywhere inside the parentheses and then you hit shift tab. If you hit shift tab once, it shows you just a brief signature and doc string. If you hit it a second time, the window gets bigger. If you hit it a third time, it stays there for longer. And if you hit it a fourth time, it takes up a whole half of your screen, which is super handy if you're trying to use a function and you need to reference it. It's now a split screen. You can even change the size of it. If you wanna get rid of it, just hit the X, okay? So again, you click anywhere in the parentheses and then you hit Shift Tab. One, two, three, four times to get a split screen um, but just hit it once if you want to just see a pop-up, okay? So that's it for today. Thanks so much for joining me. Please feel free to click subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And if you have a pandas question or a tip that you want to share with others, please share it in the comment section below. I'll be reading there too. Uh, and we can all help each other to learn, okay? Thanks so much, and I will see you again soon.